How you doing guys, welcome to another video. This is topic 18, acids and bases, probably the hardest one in this topic where we look at calculations of Ka and Kb. Make sure you got your calculator, let's go. So volume 8, Ka, Kb and Kw, we look at Ka and Kb expressions and then we just do some calculations for examples. The IB understandings focus around Ka and Kb, weak acids and weak bases, and we basically need to solve problems involving Ka and Kb. We'll also talk about when you need to write down your assumption in the question. So most acids and bases reactions in water can be considered as equilibrium. So for instance, hydrochloric acid ionizes in water to produce H3O plus and Cl minus. HCl is the acid, water is the base, and Cl minus would be described as the conjugate base. Because HCl is a strong acid, it has a weak conjugate base. So we can write an equilibrium expression for this process. Kc, concentration of products over the concentration of reactants, which would give us the concentration of the hydronium multiplied by the concentration of the chloride over the concentration of the acid multiplied by the concentration of water. Now that is the equilibrium expression. Now the Ka value, the acidity constant, is slightly different. To write the acidity constant for hydrochloric acid, which is 10 to the 7, what we need to do is remove water. Water is said to be a constant, about 55 molar, so it can be removed from the expression. So the Ka value for hydrochloric acid would be the concentration of H3O plus multiplied by the concentration of Cl minus divided by just the concentration of HCl. Now, this value is equal to 10 to the 7, which is a very, very large value. And that means that the equilibrium sits very far to the right, and that's why it's classified as a strong acid. On the right-hand side, we have a table for some other Ka values of some acids you might know. Ethanoic acid, phosphoric acid, both considered to be weak acids, so they have a low Ka value. Nitric and sulfuric are the other two acids that are considered to be strong acids, and you can see they have a much higher Ka value. So the Ka value gives you an indication of the strength of the acid. The greater the Ka value, the better the acid, or the better it is at ionizing. So for example, ethanoic acid, it's considered a weak acid because the reactants are favored in the equilibrium. We've got the ionization of ethanoic acid shown, where ethanoic acid is the acid and the acetate ion would be the conjugate base. Now that acetate ion is actually quite a strong conjugate base, which is why ethanoic acid is considered to be a weak acid. That means that only a very small amount of the acid molecules have ionized in water. And if you're asked to explain, make sure you say in water. So we'd be asked to write the acidity constant Ka, which would be equal to the acetate, the concentration of the acetate ion multiplied by the concentration of the hydronium ion divided by the concentration of ethanoic acid. That is the expression for the Ka. Now just in terms of if we had a sample, which species would be in the greatest concentration, the acid or the other two ions? Well, because the acetate ion and the hydronium ion are on the same side of the equation, then that means they would have the same concentration. And because it's a weak acid, they'll be generally quite small. So the species that will be most concentrated in the solution would be the acid molecules. A weak acid mainly consists of acid molecules and only a few of them ionize. So we can come up with a general formula for acidity constants. For any weak acid that ionizes in water, we apply the general, for, the general formation. HA is our acid and it ionizes to form hydronium and A minus, which is our conjugate base. So we can write a, dissociate, a, a Ka value for this general equation. Hydronium ions multiplied by the concentration of A minus divided by the concentration of HA, that should say HA, not A. When a base reacts to, with water, it accepts hydrogens from the water molecule, and in a base we can write a basicity contest, or a, a Kb value. So our Kb value will be written the exact same way as our Ka value. 
where we eliminate water from the expression. So here we would have BH+, which is the base accepting the proton, multiplied by the hydroxide concentration, divided by the concentration of the base. So let's get into some calculations. Calculate the acid dissociation constant Ka at 298 Kelvin for a solution of propanoic acid. The pH is 3.43. Now in any question, we will be asked to identify our assumptions. But before we do that, let's go through and look at the process for doing this calculation. The first thing I would recommend, if you can, is writing an ionization expression for this reaction. So here we have the propanoic acid ionizing with water to form the CH3, CH2, C00- anion and H3O+. So we can write our Ka expression from that equation. The Ka expression will be the CH3, CH2, C00, H- anion multiplied by the hydronium ions divided by the concentration of propanoic acid. And we're going to use this Ka value because that's what we need to calculate. We need to calculate the Ka value. But there's a certain number of steps we need to take. The first thing we need to do is to calculate the H3O plus concentration. We're given the pH, so we use the formula 10 to the minus pH, which will give us our concentration of H plus. Now, because we've got the concentration of H plus, we, where has that come from? Well, that must have been one propanoic acid molecule ionizing. So that means if we've got that much H3O+, then we must have the same amount of the anion CH3, CH2, COO-, because for every one that ionizes to form a H3O+, we also form one of these. So we assume that those two concentrations are equal. That's our first assumption. Now, our second assumption comes from an approximation of the amount of H3O plus that is produced. And the approximation is valid when that error is less than 5%. So the way we calculate this is as follows. We take our H3O plus concentration and we divide it by the concentration of the acid initially. And basically what we're looking for here is a small value which says that the concentration hasn't changed very much and less than 5% is considered to be within error. So when we do that calculation, we see that we are within 3.7%, which means that we can assume that the concentration of the propanoic acid essentially doesn't change. It remains the same throughout this reaction. So we're going to make the assumption that the propanoic acid has the concentration of 0.01 molar, even though some of it has transferred into H3O+, but that is our assumption. That assumption works in this case because we have a low error. If it was above 5%, then we would need to take that into consideration, and that's in the next example. So now I can start to plug in some of my values into Ka. I've got the H3O plus concentration, and I've also made the assumption that the anion is the same as H3O plus, so that becomes squared. And then we divide that by the concentration of the acid. So we have our H3O plus squared, which was 3.7 times 10 to the minus 4 squared, and now we divide that by 0.01. That was part of our assumption, and that will give us our Ka value of 1.3, times 1.38 times 10 to the negative 5 molar. And that's our Ka value for propanoic acid. It's fairly low, which means it's a weak acid. All right, a very quick review with that assumption. We know that some of the acid will form hydronium ions, but for this calculation, we have assumed that it stayed constant because it's under 5%, which we say is the range of error. If we calculated that over 5%, we need to do something different which is this question. So calculate the base dissociation constant, the Kb, for a solution of 1-phenylmethylamine. The pH of the solution is 10.17. Now this is a Kb calculation, but we want to go about it in the same way. So this time I'm going to use the general formula for a Kb expression with our base plus water going to BH plus and OH minus. I'm going to start by writing out my Kb expression, which will equal to be equal to P, BH plus times OH minus divided by the concentration of the base. 
Now for the KB expression, we're given the H plus, but we need to work out OH minus. So I'll work out the H plus first by doing 10 to the negative pH. And then I'm going to use the KW. Remember that, that the concentration of H3O plus multiplied by the concentration of OH minus equals KW, which is 10 to the minus 14 standard level. So I'm going to use that to calculate the OH minus, which is 1.48 times 10 to the minus 4. Now I'm going to make some of my assumptions. Again, if BH plus is equal to OH minus, for every OH minus we form, we form one BH plus. So I'm going to assume that they're in a one to one ratio. Now my other assumption comes about from the concentration of the hydroxide and the concentration of the base. Now I need to determine whether or not that concentration is in the range of error. So I get my OH minus concentration and divide it by my concentration of my base and then times that by 100 to find out if it is less than 5%, but in this case it's not. In this case it's 14%. That means that it's significant in terms of how much of the base actually reacts to form OH minus. So we need to take that into consideration when we do the calculation. And this is how we do it. Our KB value is going to equal OH minus squared, and then we've got our concentration of base, and then we need to take away our concentration of hydroxide because it's significant in terms of how much hydroxide is produced. So we have the value for OH minus, and we square that, and then we divide that by the concentration of the base, which is 0.001. And then we need to take away the OH minus because a large amount of this base actually formed OH minus. Too much for it to be assumed that it's constant. So you always need to do that little check. And generally, if we have a low concentration of either acid or base, most of the time we will have to do that step. Higher concentrations, not so much. Okay, so the first two examples were calculating a Ka, calculating a Kb. This is the other type of question they'll give you calculate the pH of a weak acid solution. So here we have a weak acid solution. We've been told the concentration 0.5 molar and we've been told the Ka value as well. They might not tell you the Ka, they might want you to look it up in the data book. So remember to go and do that if you have to. So we start off by writing our Ka expression, which is our hydronium ion concentration multiplied by A minus divided by our concentration of the acid. We want to make the assumption here again that H3O plus will be equal to A minus because they're on the same side of the equation. If we form one H3O plus, we're going to form one A minus. Now that helps us out because we need to find H3O plus so we can simplify the equation to H3O plus squared divided by HA. We've got the Ka value from the question. We've also got the concentration of the acid from the question. So now we can rearrange this equation to make it in terms of the hydronium ion concentration. And we need to use a square root this time. So we have the square root of our Ka value, which was given to us. Otherwise, we would have to look it up in the data book. So it's the square root of 7.1 times 10 to the minus 4 multiplied by the concentration of the acid, which is 0.5. And that gives me my my hydrogen ion concentration, which will be fairly low. Now I need to use the formula pH equals the negative log of base 10 to H plus to calculate the pH of this solution. So the pH would be equal to 3.45. So volume eight, some top tips. Make sure you state your assumptions, it's in the guidance and identify the types of questions. Is it Ka, Kb or pH? Thanks for watching guys, don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.